Ed's World is one of the most iconic Flash cartoons to have ever existed. Even if you've never watched it or looked into it yourself, you've heard of it. That's how it is for me anyway. I never grew up with the franchise and I knew no one that ever watched it. But even with that said, given my exposure to Flash cartoons growing up, I knew the general gist of it. That being it was a Flash comedy series that started up in the 2000s. Although I grew up with a lot of Flash things, I was more of a madness kid and I never really diversified. Ed's World started off as a comic series made by Ed Gold, and as time went on, the series became more and more popular and started focusing more on animations. These were based off Ed and his friends. Most of the characters from the show were named and based off real people. But unfortunately, in early 2012, Ed would die after a six year battle with cancer. And although almost any other series would die after the main creator's death, it continued afterward because of its dedicated fans base and Ed's own wish for it to succeed. And even now, despite it being almost two decades old at this point, the series is still going really strong. And if that isn't a testament to someone, I don't know what is. There are so far three phases to the franchise, Ed's World, which started in 2003 and ended in 2012, Ed's World Legacy, the animations and comics that came out post Ed's death, which lasted from 2012 to 2016, and Ed's World Beyond, the newest series that's been releasing animations since 2020. And despite how old it is and how usually when a show or franchise goes on for so long it turns real bad, it's still a good series. Like I said, I never watched it growing up, but I decided to watch a few episodes to get a general gist of it, and it's pretty good from what I saw. You still see a clear reason why it took off. And as such, given anything that gets decently popular, a fandom springs up. And this franchise was no different. It got a dedicated following pretty fast. Past, with plenty of fan works, animations, fan art, comic, fan fiction, anything. There was a bad part, obviously. In general, they had a major toxicity problem, and they even had the dream problem where people would ship real life people with each other. And to be clear, I don't care about gay ships, but when you're shipping real life people or characters who are intentionally self inserts of real life people, you're gross and you should know better. Especially since one of them is actually dead now and has been been for almost a decade. That said, the community's mellowed out, although there's still some bad in it, and the person I'm talking about today is one of those bad elements. The person I'm talking about is Mark Lovello. He's a child groomer, and although he's mostly known for his involvement with the Edge World fandom, he also runs a gaming channel on YouTube. He does a lot of reviews for games and has been at it since 2014. It's mostly just retrospectives and live streams, but that's not what I'm talking about today. Before his main channel, he was the lead creator of the Edge World fan movie called The Edge World Fan Movie. Original, I know. Took some major brain power to come up with that one. He had even worked on a couple official episodes for the show. Although not having that big of a role, even when he did work on episodes, I thought it would be important to mention. Although the fan film had a decent following and started off well enough, it fell apart for a multitude of reasons. It was in development hell for almost a decade. The story doesn't make any sense and it's just dumb as hell. There's an actual released version of the movie because it got cancelled and it's one of the most confusing fucking things I've ever watched. It deals with war and aliens and it's just... It's stupid. And despite it being a fan work, the main man Mark decided to monetize the channel even though they were supposed to be a fan work channel which got them into legal trouble. And worst of all, both heads of this project turned out to be disgusting creeps who went after minors. Them being Mark and another person named Piptoons. And the reason I'm talking about Mark is because the other guy left the internet and got kicked out of his own house from what I've been told. So he's no longer a threat to minors, thankfully, but Mark still is. So what did Mark do? Well, he made a minor who was 15 send him real life fetish pictures to him. He was originally exposed on TikTok during late 2020. I'll link to the original video, which shows he was creepily messaging someone from the ages of 15 through 17. A lot of the messages show how he wanted the minor to send him feet pics and how it would be quirky and funny is what he would say, but in reality, it's really gross and weird. Weird, and it's clearly for his fetish. They also did roleplay, which you know, nothing incriminating about fetish roleplay with minors. And like a lot of weird fetish people, they put their fetishes into their work. Think of Dan Schneider. He was a weird guy that was into feet, and you can see a lot of weird feet.
feet stuff in his shows. And with Mark, you can see a lot of weird feet stuff in his art or what he was working on. Maybe it's a sign, I don't know. <laughs> there also might have been an incident with an 11 year old, but due to no screenshots being shown or confirmation that the kid was even 11, take that with a massive grain of salt. But he didn't remain quiet on these allegations. He decided to make a video responding when it first came out, and then he deleted it quickly afterward because it was god awful. <laughs> I have never seen a bigger blunder of a video. The video is 16 minutes long, so I'm not going to show all of it, but it's so clear what he's doing. He started off with, oh, I had to record this six times that I didn't turn the comments off to avoid criticism, as he turns the comments off to avoid criticism and, <laughs> and disables likes and dislikes. He flat out admits to doing all of it, by the way, but then says that in his defense, his family said he's not a groomer. <laughs> yes, uh, we did converse, we did role play, we did exchange pictures, uh, we did do all those things that this person has claimed. I'm not a pedophile and I'm not a groomer. I, I don't intend to groom people in any way whatsoever. That's, that is not, that is not the kind of person that I am. We did exchange pictures. And this video is dragged out for almost 20 fucking minutes. And it's just him saying the same thing over and over again. I did it, but it's not grooming and I'm ashamed of myself, but you should forgive me and I'm not that bad. So you should drop it and not mention it again. <laughs> he even reached out to the kid to ask if they would take the video down since they're apparently all good now. You've forgiven me. Let's just forget about it. And like, even if they did forgive you, you're still a danger to minors. He tried to hold the minor to the fact that they said they would take the video down and that they deleted the response but the minor was probably freaked to the fuck out that he was messaging them again despite apparently being sorry for what you've done you're trying to pressure them to delete their video and act like it's fine and they should let go it's especially funny because he just deleted the video because people weren't buying this shit and after this travesty he made a follow-up video where he not only decided to link a charity to help his bullshit statements he doubled down on the excuse by saying that they were good friends so therefore it wasn't grooming. He even said stuff like, oh, I only asked for feet pictures from a minor so it's fine. He even calls this drama. Grooming children isn't drama. People calling you out for said grooming isn't drama. If him belittling this doesn't show how awful he is, I don't know what will. And it's just 11 minutes of him just doubling down on the same shit. He even explains what grooming is in detail, but then fails to realize how he just told his audience how he did groom someone and how by his own definition he's a groomer but it didn't really matter because people just bought this shit for no reason you can see people in his comments going like your name is cleared or you explained yourself very well and it's like no no the hell he didn't if you think somehow he cleared his name you're, you're stupid <laughs> all the miner said was he asked for feet pictures and groomed them and guess what he did exactly Exactly that. He doesn't deserve people's sympathies. He's a gross creep in his 20s. Also, even though this was supposed to be his official response, he enlisted it soon after because hiding away what you've done to minors is easier than giving them closure. Mark is a self-admitted creep and is one of the main reasons the Edwards fan movie never finished. Although, I don't think we lost too much on that failing. He's a gross downplayer of grooming who is fine with admitting to it, but not right with taking the consequences of it. That said, don't go blame the community for this or think this is the standard. From what I've looked into, there are very few grooming cases in the fandom. In fact, Mark and Pintoons make up almost half of them from what I can find. He's just a gross creep and people are better off with him gone. That said, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Also, I'm streaming more on Twitch, so uh, hop by if you can. And as always, I want to thank my members. Their names will be in the description as well. With a special thank you to Sun's Embrace, Cinef Productions, Steely, Semper Fidelis, Waffle Waffles, and Ura Marine Corps. Thanks for watching and uh, bye!